Okay, here I uh, grew some crystals in the magnetic field. I want you to see the shape of these. See, they're totally different. They grew totally different, and they grew around the outside of the magnetic field, like right in here. See? Look at this one. So it grew in the magnetic field. Totally different looking shapes. And look at this one here. And this is the way that we had it arranged. We had it trapped in the magnetic field right here, like this. So, just wanted to share that with you. Okay, I'm back here with part two. This is where the buffer on the computer quits. So here's what the cells are doing, but the humidity right now is very high here in Coeur d'Alene, about 82%. And so these are exposed to the air. We're going to see, Chuck and I are going to seal these up. So, but we wanted to share with you, this is where the buffer runs out. So see, it went down with the humidity as the storm came in. So now we're going to reset the buffer and and see where it is. Okay, we'll start this again. Okay. So now we'll back this up. can see. I'll try to make this a little bit. 500 samples so you can see that the humidity is going down because the storm passed and you can see right here that it's rising up again. So it finds its happy medium place during the humidity and then when it dries out it, it finds another happy medium place. So I'm just going to let this continue to go. But we wanted to share this with you. And here's, here's the load. Here's the cells. And there's your voltage reading. And you can see it wants to climb there. It's starting to climb and dip. So it climbs, dips, climbs, dips, depending on the humidity. Let's see if we can expand this out. <coughs> Go to 200 samples. Okay, now you can see a better picture of it. So now we're just going to watch it climb again, and then I'll post another YouTube. Thanks. <coughs> yeah, I want to come back with part three here. Show you these crystals that uh, grew in the magnetic field. I'm going to show you something here. Look at how this one grew. This is on the edge of the magnetic field. You can see this one started on the edge. By the way, these batteries are very piezoelectric because you can see here this spike and this spike when they're in this condition, if you push on them like Jack's doing, yeah, just push down on it like that, you can see it just generated a spike right here. So these are working more like an electret, I think. Uh, there's a difference when there's moisture. So the energy, I might have to change my opinion around a little bit here on these batteries because as I push on this battery, I'm generating spikes. See? You can see them here. See that? Chuck, see that dip there? Mm hmm. So, right now, they're acting more like a piezoelectric. 
I wanted to point that out. I, I can expand this out maybe. Uh, I'm going to go the other way here. Let's go to auto. There you go. Might be able to see that right in there. This is where I push on the cell and it generates these voltages. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to push on that, Chuck. Do it on the star cell right there, the one that's... There you go. You see it generate that spike right there? That's what we wanted to show you. So they're piezoelectric. Just as everybody's predicted, they work on a piezoelectric principle of between hot, cold, and humidity. So that's why you see them rise. That's why you see them fall. And that's where your energy seems to be coming from, is the piezoelectric effect. And they can uh, sustain pretty well on the loads. And then later on today, Chuck and I are going to look for an LED, as I said in my post. So we wanted to share this with you.